So everything we've done in the first part of the course has been uh, combinational logic, which means that um, the outputs of our circuits have only depended on the inputs of our circuits. Um, and so in this section, we're actually going to um, start to deal with more sequential logic. And so it's good to know the difference between what we've been doing and what we're about to do. Um, combinational logic, as I just said, uh, means that the outputs of a circuit depend only on the inputs of the circuit. Sequential logic means that the output of our circuit depends on the inputs of the circuit, but it also depends on uh, past values of the circuit as well, so things from previous cycles through our circuit. In order to be able to construct these kinds of sequential circuits, we need to have a way of remembering what's happened in the past. We need to have a way of storing data, of keeping information around so that we can refer to it uh, when we are uh, updating the configuration of our logic circuits. Um, so one way to do that is to use what's called a latch. So on this screen, we see an SR latch, right? Um, it's called SR because of the inputs, S and R, right? And you see that it consists of two NOR gates that are cross-coupled. By cross-coupled, I mean that the output of this NOR gate is fed into the input of the second NOR gate, and vice versa. The output of the second NOR gate is fed into the input of this NOR gate. So how does it work? Well, you see that we actually have one output down here called Q. This is going to be the output of our latch. And consider what happens in the case where S is equal to 1 and R is equal to 0. Uh, the way that a NOR gate works, right, if S is equal to 1, I know that the output will in fact be 0, right? Um, so S is equal to 1 means that this output is 0, which gets fed into the second NOR gate. So this output is now 0. Ignore the 1 here for right now. The reset is also 0. 0 nor 0 is going to be 1, right? And so the output of Q is going to be equivalent to S, right? If S is high and R is 0, then Q is also high. This um, S actually stands for set. And so when S is high and R is 0, that means we are going to be setting our output to be high. Now if we look at the case where R is 1 and S is 0, we can see that this, the output of this NOR gate should be high because um, this value will be, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the output of this NOR gate should be low because we have a high input coming from our reset bit. The output will be low. The output um, of this NOR gate up top has two zeros coming in, so its output will be high, right? And so we see that the value of Q the value of Q in this situation will be low. R stands for reset. So if R is high and S is low, that means we are resetting Q. That means we are putting Q to be a low signal. Um, you may have also noticed that this output up here that is not actually labeled is always going to be the opposite of Q. So this output is sometimes labeled as Q0. Right? Um, so we, we, so far we haven't stored anything. Right? We haven't actually stored any information yet in this circuit. But let's consider again the case where S is high and R is low. So when S is high and R is low, the output of Q is also high. right? And then consider what happens when we set the S signal to low immediately following. So now they are both low, but Q was high previously. right? So this output is high. The output coming in through here now will be low. right? The output coming from this particular circuit is low nor low, which is going to be high. It's actually going to remain in the same configuration that it was when S is high and R is low. And so if we examine the second case where I have R as high and S is low, and then I move R to be from the high signal to the low signal, what happens? Right? Q starts out as low. Right? I've taken R and I've moved it from high to low. So I see actually the exact same configuration that's on this screen right now, where the input to this NOR gate is low. The other input to this is going to be high. And so you can see that the circuit retains its previous configuration. This is important. So if the outputs to S and R are both low, the output of the circuit is going to be whatever the previous value of that circuit is. Um, this is how a latch works. This is how a latch allows us to 
remember values. It allows us to store values. So if I take a look at a truth table for, for this, right, you can see uh, S is 0, R is 1, that's the reset. S is 1, R is 0, that's the set. And then finally, if I see that they are both low, it's going to be whatever is whatever it was previously. So if I was in this configuration previously, it will be 0. If I was in this configuration previously, this will be 1. Now there's one other configuration that's worth talking about. What if they are both high? So let's consider that case when both values are high. So S goes high, right? R goes high. I know that both outputs um, in that particular case should in fact be 0, right? Should in fact be 0. So both Q and this upper one, Q naught, will also be 0, which should be an indication that something bad is about to happen. And so then what happens if I go to this 0, 0 state from there, right? So now they both go down to 0. What happens? Well, the inputs to all of these NOR gates are now 0, which means the outputs will be 1. But when the output travels back through the cross-coupling back to the inputs, that flips the output to be 0 again, which will then travel back to both of the cross-coupled inputs and cause the output to be 1, and then cause the output to be 0, and then 1, and then 0, and then 1, and it creates this oscillating effect where the output is not stable. We actually call it metastability uh, when the uh, latch is in this particular state. So this um, set of inputs right here where S and R are both high is actually very undesirable. We do not like to put our SR latches in this particular state. This is a problem for us, right? This is a problem. Um, we as circuit designers need to somehow ensure that that will never ever happen that our circuit will never ever be in this particular state. Um, so we'll actually take a look at how to solve that problem in future videos. Uh, just to kind of wrap this video up, right? typically if, if we are using latches in our circuits, you can of course draw the cross-coupled NOR gates, but you are also welcome to use a component diagram that looks something like this, where I have my S bit coming in and my R bit coming in and my Q bit coming out. Sometimes you will see an additional output down here uh, called Q naught, which again, remember, is the inverse of the uh, Q output. So in the following video, we'll talk a little bit more about that metastability st state and see if we can fix it, see if we can make this latch a little bit better and uh, provide us some additional functionality for our storage.